everyone and welcome to Cafe Kodi and welcome to another new and amazing session of Coffee with CEO where we are having an amazing young female entrepreneur who is doing wonders in tech, Mahizara from Five River Technology. Hi Mahizara, how are you? Hi Nazia, I'm well, wonderful to be here. And uh, uh, so we are so excited to have you here because number one, tech. Number two, a female CEO is so uncommon here. Do you agree with the comment? Um, yes, I think we're changing that. Mm -hmm. But uh, currently, yes, I would say definitely many more men than there are women. Yes, so well, tell us more about your five previous uh, technology. So basically, Five News Technologies is a tech firm. Uh, we're a software development house, and we've been uh, in the market since 2003. 2003? Yes, yes. We've been working uh, at the cutting edge of uh, technology. Uh, we started off with enterprise management and cloud computing, and now we are heavily involved with big data and artificial intelligence and machine learning. So, um, always trying to push those boundaries a little further. So, how many uh, employees are working with your this tech firm? Uh, we're currently over 150 people. Aha, uh -huh, in tech? Yeah, wow. yeah. and uh, this is across all of our departments. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, that's that's what we're doing. So, you are exporting all your products internationally. Yes, I think. Can you uh, please be telling us who are your clients or tell us some more about it? So, basically, uh, we do... Uh, Export yeah. services, yes, but not necessarily our products so much. Okay. Uh, we are an extension of certain US companies, and they're their offshore arm. So uh, that that's the way we work. Ooh. So we have dedicated teams. Sometimes companies come to us with a project. Uh, they don't have a tech team at all, mm -hmm. and they want us to develop their mm -hmm. uh, MVP, and so that you know they can get some funding and they can launch it. So from that to just, you know, being uh, an augmentation of their team to being their entire tech team. Ah. So we have multiple different models. And how you are known to those companies? That's uh, important. I want to know so that we can tell the yeah. rest of the people too. Uh, so basically it's all uh, relationship management. I okay. mean, um, they got in touch with us. They wanted to work with us for certain uh, contacts in the US. Mm. And then I think from there it's just about striking the relationship and delivering uh, good services. So then uh, word of mouth as well, reference as well, yes. does they work? Yes, yes, they definitely, I think they work better than anything else. Because uh, when someone wants to outsource their work to you, mm -hmm. they have to trust you. Yes, uh, With great. their idea, with their IP, uh, they need to know that you will be able to deliver everything that they need. Mm -hmm. And so I think uh, instead of, you know, uh, cold calls or marketing like that, mm -hmm. referrals definitely uh, so, work much, much better. So tell us more about the software industry internationally and the national. Wow, the software industry is pretty big. Yeah, uh, <laughs> very, very big. Uh, everything from, uh, you know, mobile phone games and applications to enterprise management to now a lot of things that are coming up in big data and AI. So uh, we focus more on the enterprise side. We work with large companies. Um, we're seeing a lot of very interesting things happening there. Um, because of the current um, expansion mm -hmm. in data and our ability to hold all of that data and uh, record all of that data, mm -hmm. we are being able to get some insights into mm -hmm. things that were not um, you know, feasible before or not possible before. For instance, you have a mobile phone, I have a mobile phone. This was not very common. Before. Just a couple of decades back, right? Yes. So all of these devices are recording data. Mm -hmm. All sorts of data. You have smart cars, they're recording data, they have sensors, all of that. So all of this data is now coming to us and we have it and we can gather insights from it. So um, personally, I'm a mathematician. My degrees are in mathematics. Ooh. Yeah, and uh, data You're not from tech. Later mathematics and data science. They are interrelated. Yes, that's how I kind of found my way here. But uh, yes, I, I, I think it's a very exciting time to be living in, and there is a lot that can be done all over the world and in Pakistan as well. Now tell us more about the Pakistani market, where it's an emerging market, did a lot last year. So your comment on Pakistani market of your industry? I think we're doing great, and I think we have amazing potential to grow. Um, 
we always hear that our population and our young population, you know, is a, is a problem and we need to control it. But this is one way in which we can actually use our population and young population wow. um, to do something productive. Exactly, to do something productive, to break barriers, and we're seeing that, right? So many startups got so much funding, international yes. funding last year. So I think that's something that's going to continue. Mm. And uh, we're constantly looking for people. Uh, I mean, in the tech industry, I don't think there are many people who will not be getting jobs. In fact, you know, we're fighting for resources mm. across companies. Mm. Yeah. So uh, I think this is the time for young people who are thinking of what they want to do to just get into tech, to get into computer science, computer engineering, mathematics, just anything STEM related. How about the quality of the uh, kids or how quality of now people you are getting now? So unfortunately, it's not 2003. So much. Yeah, 2020. So, so, so in, uh, are you getting more qualified, more dedicated, more good people, human resource, or what's so, the answer? Um, our education institutions are getting better, right? Thank you. We are no, no, we are getting better. Okay, but I feel like the children and their passion and their seriousness to really do something that will change things. That I see lacking. It's like attitude as in a nation of the younger nation. Yes, yes. That 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 is a problem. I don't see the passion. I don't see the drive. I see people hopping from job to job after just for some bucks. Just for you know ten thousand rupees, twenty thousand rupees. They are not looking at the long run. Uh -huh. They are not seriously looking at what they are doing hmm. and what they are capable of doing. Hmm. So that is something that disappoints me a little bit. Uh, because I feel like we do have a lot of potential. Yes. We have amazing, amazing uh, talent here. Mm. But to make that talent actually focus. translate into something, you do have to be focused. And you do have to have a passion for something. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that I feel is missing. And I, I really hope that that's something that we turn around, especially with all of this uh, funding coming in. Mm -hmm. I hope younger people will be more passionate about so so, yes, no. Do you think that this academia and corporate needs to be linked together? That the entrepreneurs or the companies, good software companies, should be going out, reaching out to the universities and teaching the kids how to be more passionate, how to be more in industry or what you suggest? Yeah, I don't, I don't think we teach anyone to be passionate. That's that tough of that. that something that comes from within. You can definitely nurture it. Mm. So, for instance, if someone has a dream, and they haven't been able to find the right environment. Yes, we can provide the right environment. But we can't give you a dream, right? That passion that you can affect change, it has to come from within you. Within, within uh, us. And I really, I hope that we will see more young people now who will come to us with that because there's been a lot of excitement around the tech sector in Pakistan. Mahizara, tell us, how do you keep up your uh, self updated with the current technology, current updates, current everything for River, uh, no, for your company? Uh, my clients and my team. So like I said, <laughs> we're constantly working on the cutting edge. Okay. So everything that we do, everything new that we do every day, it's a challenge. And because mm. I myself have a background in data science, mm. I'm pretty involved in all of the projects. Uh -huh. I, I want, yes, yes, yes. So I want to know what's going on, what we're doing. Um, and so that that's how I keep updated. Basically, that, that is my life. <laughs> so tell us about the image of Pakistani software industry worldwide. Because we're dealing with all the international yes. writers. Yes. So uh, they do they feel good uh, getting the services from us or how it is? Um, or we are the second choice for them? I, I do believe we are definitely not the first choice for them. Okay. Uh, and that's something that we have to change. Yes. Um, and then you, later you need to tell me the reasons too. <laughs> yeah. So um, we're not really that well known. Actually, that's Ooh, the problem. That's what I wanted you to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the problem. And everything that is known about us is it, it's, it's very, um, very negative. And I guess negative sells mm. for some reason, negative news sells. Mm. Uh, and probably as a nation, as a people, we ourselves have not done a very good job of being ambassadors. Yes, in branding. Hmm. So, so, you know, when we go out and we meet people and they ask us about our country and we tell them, they are pretty surprised because they've never heard all the normal things, you know. Like, yes, we have cafes. <laughs> yes, we love <laughs> cafes. So, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, girls do study science and it's that bad. It's, it's so, really that bad. And when we've had clients visiting us, uh, they're like, they always go back 
raving about the country. Oh, no. yeah. like you guys are so amazing. You were so hospitable. We love your food. We love the way you work. You know, all of that. And it's just, it's very unfortunate that all that they know of us is a very tiny, small bit, which is all negative. Which is all. Awesome. And they don't know that you know all of us, our entire nation. It's just. We are so warm. We are so hospitable. We are so much fun. There's so we are so fun. beautiful. <laughs> My beautiful country, country, yeah. country. Yeah, our country is very beautiful. So I think those are things that we have to change. I think so. That's why government also is putting a lot of effort in um, uh, your industry so that they know that they, this will be branding a very positive image of Pakistan. Very true. But again, I mean, there's certain things the government can do, and there's certain things that you and I yeah, and and can do. Uh, yes. Because the government will always come as a government. Mm-hmm. The, the relationships that we have abroad, those are our friends or our family friends. They will trust They're us. They're our customers. Yeah. yeah. So they will trust us more. So we have to make sure that wherever we are in the world, we are ambassadors for our country. Or must not forget that. No, we should not. Okay, now tell us more about the martial arts and martial arts this year. Your industry closed a very good uh, for Expo. They contributed a lot in Expo. Now. So where did you see this next year or what? Uh, Ooh, why up? All the way up. Uh, why you, not? Is why? My question. No, no, I know. <laughs> why? Why? Why you are say why you are so positive about it? Uh, it's about because you are getting good resources, or it's like that you go guys are more but as an industry, you guys are more trained and you know your job. Why do you think so that it's so bad? No, I think it's because where technology is right now is very exciting. Uh, the big data revolution, mm-hmm. I mean, that is something that is leveraged in the right way. You don't even need a lot of resources to create something very big. Do uh, a small team can do wonders. Yes, yes. And I mean, if you look at uh, successful products all over the world, usually it is small team doing wonders. Right? Yes. So you What's don't. For instance, I will give you an example. This is my favorite example. I mean, <laughs> all of my uh, developers and team members. The Pakistan team recently won a historic match. Yes, they did. Yes, they were 11 people. Huh. And you know that the entire nation they were like, was. Yes. So um, it's sometimes it's not the amount of people you have, it's how much passion that the group has to get. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So wow, this is so good. Inshallah, inshallah. Now tell us, Mahe Zara, you being the female in 2003, entering into tech, the challenges you faced. So in 2003, I was still pretty young. I was studying. Uh, I joined Firebase Technologies in 2010 uh, after I did my master's in operations research from UT Austin. Okay. So uh, that that's when I entered, and I remember going to a telecom conference right after I joined Firebase. And uh, I'm not kidding. It was all men. All men. Must About be. 150 men. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. And it was it was a little, you know, oh. what's going on oh. here. But you know what? This is not only a problem in Pakistan. Women in STEM, women in tech, this is a problem all over the world. Seriously? Yes. yes, yes. Most definitely. Facebook was headed by a woman. Matlab, uh, this, 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 this is a major role. Men, men, role. And there are lots of other things. True. Sure, that's, that's happening. That's yes. happening now. But also these women, I mean, it's, they're getting there, they're getting up there, but do look at what is also below, right? One might make it to the top, but how many women are there supporting her throughout the organization across all different roles? It's still not the way it should be at all. So um, one might be lucky, and uh, one might come through a landline. Landline also a high profile role. But that doesn't necessarily mean that women are, uh, you know, well represented in the tech industry. And like I said, this is all over the world. So what, what were the challenges you faced then and then now? Um, I wouldn't say the challenges. Um, the problems. Um, when I was studying at UT, I uh, saw that all of my professors were male. There was one female. And she said to us, we were a bunch of girls. We were three or four girls in that program. And she called us and she said, you know, girls, you are women in tech and I hope that you know that that's a visible role and that you are ready for it. And uh, she was a different nationality. My, all my um, uh, students, about my friends, all her students, we were all different nationalities and we were in the United States of America. And she said this, and it is true, it is true, but that does not mean that we cannot change it. And that does not mean that this is something that is going against us. I think we 
we don't think how much power we ourselves have in our hands. So, I mean, if more women want to go for tech, mm-hmm. if more women want to go for careers, they can. They should. And especially in our society, if a women feel that they don't have the support, now tech organizations are offering that support. And uh, our organization offers that support. I mean, if you're getting married, if you're having a child, we will deal with you through all of that. But oftentimes, it is you who have to take the first step. You. Instead of blaming society, uh, blaming your country, blaming you know, just everybody. Hmm. Uh, try and see what you can do to alleviate. It's like I said, instead of you know coming from the government to portray a good uh, picture of your country abroad, you are an ambassador. Why don't you do it? Why there are no more girls stepping into tech then? If it's like so, uh, go. I don't know why. I, I really don't know. Because the girls that come to me, they have been working in five years technologies. I've had women who have been doing for over 10 plus years. Mm. Uh, they came to us, they got married, they moved away. Mm. They are in different cities now, they're still working for us. Mm. They have two children, they're still working for us. Oh. So, I think it's more a perception, again, about Pakistan, like there is this perception that we are a certain way, but we are really not. Computer ka kaam karti hai. Haan. Technology wali nahi hoti. Kyu, home maker nahi ho sakti. Kyu, 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 kyu Might be, might be all the girls, they are not, uh, they are not allowed, no, not allowed, but they themselves are not very really interested in tech, might be. Maybe, maybe, but uh, for instance, I did my first master's from the University of Punjab. Hmm. Oh. And yes, and then I went on to do another one in uh, UT Austin. That entire program, there were 11 boys and 80 girls. Uh, okay. For a pure mathematics master's. So it's not that girls can't do it. And that was on merit. Right? Ah, well, all those things right. were on merit. In fact, one of our professors said that, you know, this is a subsidized position and I don't know why so many girls, you know, we should have some reserved seats for boys. For boys. <laughs> yeah. To have some more boys. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, no, I don't think it's that girls don't do it or can't do it. I think that they need to know that there are people in the industry who would support them. Mm-hmm. So now you tell me, where do you see five women technology five years down the road? Oh, I see us every year. Mm-hmm. I am a very a positive person. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that uh, we are currently actually working on a few products that we will be releasing soon. And I think from the software outsourcing and services part, we will also be stepping into products. Mm-hmm. And very exciting products, which I can't tell you more about right now. Uh, okay. But uh, as and when they release, we will obviously be letting everyone know. Uh, so yes, I think it's always onwards and upwards. If, if you have the passion, it is always going to be like that. I want to know more about uh, PakistanCreates.com as well, because when we had this discussion and I, when I was going through your profile, so there was a mention of Pakistan creates with inverted commas. Yes. So tell us more about Pakistan. So that's one of the first uh, products that we are uh, going to be launching. And in fact, we're going to be launched that e-commerce platform and we're getting vendors to sign up. Uh, one of the, so I'm a creator as well. I love to paint. Uh, oh, you're an artist? Yes. An artist in the window. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Hobby artist. <laughs> but I see that we have a lot of skill in Pakistan, whether it's, you know, women baking or cooking or doing crochet. Or you know, uh, Empo- create embroidery. Yes, all sorts of things. Making you know? pots. Yes, and even our CNC stuff. I mean, the things that they're making out of wood, etc. Yeah. Because of uh, all of the machinery that is now available, it's amazing. But there's no one place where you can go and you can find quality made in Pakistan products. And now, by quality, I mean where the vendor has been vetted, where someone has already tested the products, and we see they're up to a certain standard. So that is what we want Pakistan creates to be. Uh, a place for young women and young men and anybody who's manufacturing anything, anything, anything with quality. Pakistan. Yes, with quality. We are offering them free shops. Uh, we don't take any commission, no subscription, no nothing. This is just, it's a small way for us to give back. So it's, it's like, isn't it like branding Pakistan in a positive way? It is, it yeah. is. I, I feel that it is. Uh, because I, I, I've also talked to a lot of uh, uh, Expats and they say, you know, there's no one place when we come home, we want to take gifts abroad. Oh, and they do a, and at the end of the day, they end up in giving all those the those, same things. Uh, yes. thing that and that's that's really not true. We're making everything from soaps to candles to mm-hmm. watercolor paints to mm-hmm. acrylic paints now. It's it's just so so very. Oh. I mean, the woodwork to weaving, it's not just shawls anymore. 
Kusas, Jadar, Jadwai. And also very modern stuff, right? Yeah. So you have the Desi aesthetic and then you also have very modern things that are made in Pakistan. Hmm. So people want to have one place where they can go, hmm. uh, where they feel that you know they will find quality stuff hmm. and a lot of it, different things for different people. Mm. And so that's what we're trying to provide. Let's see how it goes. We can Inshallah, where are you going to launch it? Uh, it's already launched. Uh, PakistanPlace.com, you can go up and you can sign up and you can get a shop and you can also go and buy. Mm. Yeah. All right. So this is, uh, now tell us uh, why there is a perception of uh, an entrepreneur woman or a working woman is not a homemaker or is not very dedicated to home. Your thoughts on it. What does it mean to be a homemaker? Is it a home made by everybody who's oh, at home? Oh, that's woo woo. Okay. Yeah. It's not only single a woman who will be making no, up the home. No, you can't make a home if someone's not willing to make it with you. Hmm. So yeah, everybody who's in the house makes hmm. a home. Hmm. And uh, do there any stereotype thing that you faced during all this in your No, actually no. Wow. Which is why I'm saying it's it's portrayed to be much, much worse than it is. Um, a lot of times you make your own way. A lot of times your positivity does pave the way. Yes. Um, don't think of the worst. Try and think of the best. And uh, hope for it, pray for it, work for it. And it, it is there. Our industry is ready. So now you uh, tell us, uh, we, as we discussed before, the kids or the new generation is more towards job seeking. Then not towards entrepreneurship. How we can improve that? Actually, no. They're not even towards serious job seeking. Huh. That is my problem. Lovely, my. No, that is my problem <laughs> with them. I don't. I don't think anyone has it in them to be an entrepreneur. Frankly, because it's not easy hmm. to be on the front line Ooh. where you've taken money from investors and yes. also you are responsible for salaries at the end of the month. It's not a fun place to be at all. And not everybody is cut out to be an entrepreneur or take that level of stress. But the problem that I have with the kids now is that they don't even have a lot of passion for their job. You know, it's the commitment or the passion, love for their work. Yes. Ooh. Pride in their work. Hmm. Pride in their work. Hmm. So now you tell us, uh, are you satisfied with the quality of students you are getting from the universities? More on like the competence side. Not the attitude now, now let's come to the competence. So I, I, I get a lot of my uh, young developers when they say, you know, we want to go for a master's MZ or we want to go for I think you know, don't do it. Uh, <laughs> <Get the> experience. <laughs> because what you learn on the job is practical. Because we're constantly learning. We're constantly doing new things, we're constantly learning as constant R&D. Yes, that's pretty much all. There is such a disconnect between the industry and the university. That's what we like. That is the problem. I mean, when we bring people on board, it usually takes us two, three months to have them in a place where they can hop onto a project. Uh, Mahe, you think three qualities uh, for a CEO a must, must have? Must have for the CEO. Three qualities or competencies a CEO must have? Zero ego. Oh, oh. Because I feel like if you stop learning, that's it. That's it. You're you off. will be the bottleneck for your company. So, zero ego. Number one, uh, I think you have to be very positive mm -hmm. because there will be many, many bad days. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, you have to be very passionate. Passionate. That. Because it's, there's no other way that you will get through everything that you have to go through. What's your stance for leadership, Mahe? How do you define leadership? Someone, again, who is willing to learn, uh, who is willing to share what they have learned, and who is willing to show people the way without feeling as if, you know, they are it. Nobody is it. You have to pave the way. Walk with them. You have to pave the way for people, you have to walk with them, you have to take their hand and take them forward. Because if you are a leader, then you are responsible for creating more leaders. Mm -hmm. You can't just be the one person. Now short questions, what's your idea for success? Happy employees. Oh, 
What's your idea for love? Thank you. What's your idea for hard work or passion? What's my idea for hard work? Hard work or passion? Um, just I think being honest and dedicated. I think honesty is very very important. <laughs> if you're honest with your job and you're passionate about it, you have everything you need. How do you maintain your work life balance? I don't. <laughs> I don't. Uh, my work is my life, and my life is my work. So oh. yeah. How do you keep yourself stress free? I don't. You take stress? Of course, there's a lot of stress. Then what do you do? You do yoga, you do breathing exercises, you read good books. Mm. But of course, stress is there. I would be lying if I said. Your favorite food? My favorite food, dal dal. Oh, your favorite color? My favorite color purple. Two people very close to you? My mother and my husband. And two movies or seasons you suggest on Netflix? Does it have to be Netflix? I don't okay. know. Old general? Okay. 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 So, Pride and Prejudice. No, 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 no. No, no, no. no, no. no, no. Okay. Pride and Prejudice. Oh. And recently I've seen this one, uh, which is a book series that has been turned into a uh, season Discovery Origins. Okay. Your favorite book? Pride Any book you? Huh? Pride and Prejudice. Oh, long time yeah. back. <laughs> okay, any message of hope in optimism for you? Do I really have to say it? Don't they yeah. know it? Uh, this is an amazing time to be alive. I mean, uh, you people have everything that you need. If you university, you don't have to worry about YouTube. You don't have to worry about Coursera. There is no such limit on you anymore. If you want to go learn something, you can learn it. If you want to build something, you can build it. Just, just come, come forward with passion. Um, know that it's going to be a hard road. It's not going to be easy, but then nothing worthwhile is ever easy. And uh, know that you, one person, you can make a difference. Thank you, Mahezara. It was lovely, lovely to have you here. And what I've learned from you is number one, the positivity. Why you are so positive all the time? And all the time, but it's being the positivity comes out of you. You yeah? haven't seen me all the time, but, yes. but I, I, I can judge it. <laughs> Number two is your confidence. Thank I think you. so. That is the key. That's why you are very comfortable in uh, in tech. Uh, from the beginning till today and uh, number three is your competence the way you speak about competence the way you keep on updating yourself the way you look into people's confidence competence that's what is amazing <laughs> so uh, very very polished people tech women ka coffee with CEO karne ki so I'm so you glad you were good you I hope I fulfilled your oh, yes 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 <laughs> amazingly well and I uh, so that they are tempted to come into tech, they are tempted to work more seriously and passionately. Thank you, Mahizara. It was lovely having you here. Lovely being here.